Hey everybody, it's Strict9 with Strict9 GP, and welcome back to my Draft Day Sports College Basketball 2020 playthrough. Uh, we're in the offseason now. Um, I haven't done a whole lot uh, since that last episode. Went through the tournament then, and maybe a couple other things offline after that. And I was thinking that I would probably just sim through a lot of this offline and then come back maybe as we're getting closer to the next season. But uh, I've noticed I've gotten some questions from several of my viewers, things about like, you know, transferring and uh, can you take other jobs and how that would work. And I haven't had a whole lot of experience with this franchise. I, I did play 2019, the version before this one. But to be honest, I kind of breezed through a lot of that stuff. And so um, I got to thinking about it. Maybe that would be something fun to show, at least maybe this first go around. Uh, to show more of the off season, and so we'll probably learn a lot of things about it together. But um, we're starting with right now, for instance, the the coach hiring period, and uh, I know I've gotten some questions about that. W do I plan on taking a job at another school? And I do. Uh, but my thinking now is I really would like to um, see what kind of recruiting class this is going to turn out to be for me uh, to see if I can duplicate the kind of success I had this year with Austin P, um, with my own recruits and maybe changing up the system a little bit and playing around with that and then take on a, a bigger challenge. But uh, we'll go through what that looks like though in the off season in case I wanted to go ahead and take another job. I think you can even, you know, take a, a assistant job if you wanted to. <clears throat> and there's some things too that are, that are happening. Uh, our, uh, top assistant coach decided to retire so I'm going to need to replace him and I I don't know how that's going to work to be honest so I think we're going to have to get to that period and see if there's some available coaches out there that A are a little bit better than my second assistant um, and B can I afford so uh, we're going to have to see that I guess uh, as, as we go along I'm hoping to anyway uh, but one thing I wanted to to also look at before we uh, advance is now that I've got a season under my belt, I can look at the history tab up here and look at things like uh, coach records, uh, wins, wins and losses. So right now, of course, I'm number one all time in wins, but you look at some of the player records too, like let's say assist per game, um, you know, you got the, the leaders in that, and I'm, I'm thinking that's going to um, advance, I guess, over time. I'm not sure why it's not giving me, what is this, select record period career, huh? I'm not sure why these aren't filling up, though. So we got single game records, but no career records. Is that just because I haven't played many many years? I'm not sure why that's not showing up. So um, I had just looked at um, got all time win loss records, but, but I had just looked at the individual records there. So I, I assumed that there would be career stuff too. Um, so I guess maybe uh, if some of you guys, if you played it, played this game out, maybe you can help me out there. Or, Something I'll have to look at. Maybe it takes a few years to, to develop. I'm not sure. Um, but I'm, I'm thinking that it should develop um, here regardless. So, huh, that's a conundrum. But anyway, I thought I would show you that. Maybe I'll pay, pay attention to that next year for sure and see what, what the deal is there. Um, maybe it's one of those things where if you look at uh, career, I haven't had any players really um, who've officially left me yet, so that could be could be the case as well. I don't know. Seems like that should be a running tally. I don't. Know. I'm I'm just guessing here. Uh, something may be glitched about it, or there might be something I'm not considering. But anyway, there's that to look at. Um, so. Where we're at right now is we uh, advance to the coaching job search. And this tells you, like, 
the coach the jobs that are out there. And you can see you can go first assistant, um, second assistant, but you can show head coach only, which would be what I would be interested in. And then you can take a look at these prestige levels. And so for me, eventually, I want to move to a prestige uh, job. So give you an idea. Here's an Ohio Valley Conference uh, job that's opened up, Eastern Kentucky, uh, another one at Tennessee Martin. So those are from our conference. You're looking at a one-star prestige, uh, which is a little bit better, say, than the this Western Athletic Conference or whatever, maybe that team specifically, but they're just a half star prestige. But there are some there are some good jobs here like California in the Pac twelve or um Mississippi State in the southeastern or uh maybe Nevada Las Vegas, you know, that would be a good team to, to move from O V C to Mountain West and then to the big conference. I mean that would be probably a good career arc. Uh you got a Big Ten in Penn State, um, America East, Conference USA, several, several decent schools here have openings. Um, but like I said at the start of the episode, I'm not ready to pursue it because I want to see what I can build on my own uh, in, say, two or three seasons at, at Austin P. Uh, but there are some good... I think some good opportunities here. So that's nice to see. Maybe that'll be uh, the same next year. Um, so I can just probably skip this because I'm not going to apply to anything. And I don't know how it would work anyway, but uh, it looks like if you wish to apply for a job, just to read the instructions here, you apply for the job. Um, uh, then there's a round of hirings, and then the, you, you go through probably a few things like that until you get to either you're accepted or you're turned down. So you could probably apply to three different jobs or, or more. And so there wouldn't be any guarantee that I would get this Mississippi State job but that or, or you know one of these other big conference schools, but that's something that I'm going to be shooting for. Uh, but for now, we're going to skip it, and we're going to advance and see what the next stage is in the uh, offseason. I'm hoping it's kind of getting some assistant coaching in because we need that full lineup of, of assistant coaching to help with recruiting and things like that. So that's where we're at, staff hiring. So the alerts down here, you'll see it. This kind of gives you, um, when you see that red alert message, you need to ch check that out. That that tells you what stage you're in of the off season. So right now we're in the uh, stage to hire assistant coaches. Um, so I would click the advance button up here to go to the uh, coach hiring screen and then we would offer make offers and that's that's how it's going to work. So let's look at the inbox here too. see what we got. So we got a letter of intent from McKinnis, Mallet, McMillian, uh, and Harriman and then Athletic directors let me know that we got staff hiring going on. Let's take a look at that recruit class again, see who we got. So we got we got everybody signed that we put out there. I, I'm not too happy about this McKenna signing. I um, I kind of I kind of uh, got desperate for another shooting guard. But one of the things I did like about him is he uh, in parentheses I believe this is what their um, ratings look like after uh, maybe being involved in some of the regional um, camps and things like that. I may be wrong here, but his ratings were going up. They were trending positive, so he may eventually turn out to be a decent player. But what it means, though, for me is all five of my scholarship um, scholarships were offered. Um, but now you see I have like... A, Gosh, DJ Arnold, who I'm on his list, you know, so I could probably worked a little bit harder and may have gotten him more interested, although he's from Louisiana. I don't know if that would have made a big difference. Uh, but I'm just going to go with what I got. I, I really got the main recruit that I wanted, which was that three-star shooting guard. Pretty happy with uh, 
the point guard and, and center here that I got, uh, if they can't start, at least they're going to give me depth. So I'm, I'm cool with that. So now let's look and see. I don't think I'll see it here. Um, and it might be on the dashboard, maybe. Uh, staff. I'm just trying to see if I have like a budget yet. I don't think I do. Um, so that's pretty cool, that school info there. Gives you kind of a look at your history, I guess, and, and things like that. So we got a starting budget here. That's what this is. Okay, so 170 with a remaining budget of 34. And that should change, I think, um, as we get further along in the off season. I'm hoping. Uh, but you can also see here our team prestige and conference prestige is two stars. Um, so with that information, you know, looking back at some of those coaching jobs, I would be wanting to go to a uh, probably a three-star or higher prestige level school. Uh, that would be the next level I would be looking at. But let's go back and we're going to advance to the, the coach hiring process. So... <clears throat> I need a first assistant. Let's see what we got. Man, some of these guys are demanding a lot of money. So that's the problem. Um, so now if I look, do I have to? Yeah, so he's making forty-two a year. And he's the second assistant. The reputation is pretty poor, so I need I need somebody who's gonna be a little bit better. Um I think I need somebody, honestly, who's going to whew, have a pretty decent reputation. Uh, somebody who's good with recruiting, so 50 or better, I'll probably take it. And I'm, I'm landing on this guy right here because um, I feel like this might be somebody I could afford. Um, his age, though, is up there. I don't know if that would make a big difference. But let me see. I mean, maybe... I mean, this guy's good with scouting and recruiting. I mean, man, and player development's a little bit better, but this guy's better, you know. I kind of like this guy. Uh, player development's really good. Defense, though, is his big thing. Let me see. His coach history, he was at Dayton. He was the head coach at Dayton. There's no way this guy's going to go. Um, assistant for me, pretty sure. Um, man, assistant coach in Montana. Yeah, I think that's where I'm probably going to be stuck. Is Eastern Illinois? What about this guy? He was a head coach. Um, I don't think his, his recruiting is pretty decent scouting not that great how about this guy San Jose State had a rough time um, I do like his scouting recruiting's about in the middle reputation eh. let, me, let me see if I offer him a job what would he make uh Let's say I'm assuming I've got up to forty. Let me let me see if um, is that how it works? Let me see. For two years, 
uh, and we're gonna we're gonna see if this works I guess so um, his ambition is pretty high but I'll I'll run the one bid round and see what happens All right, so those are the results. I don't see Austin P there, so I bet he didn't like my offer. Is that or is that okay? So that's uh, let me see. So I've got him out there. His recruiting and scouting is a little bit better. Let me see. He's demanding pretty high. Um, for a short bench, heavily favors Young. Full court defense, never pressure. Uh, very slow pace, never crash. Yeah, I'm not really wanting to go there. I didn't look too much on Josh Bolton. Where, where was he at? I wish I knew how... I just wish I knew um, whether he favors the offer or if there was some kind of back and forth here. Yeah, I'm, I'm not. I'm still not seeing. I mean, he's obviously not taking the job. I'm losing out here a little bit. Um, I mean, I'm starting to probably have to get down to the the, the lower reputation guys if I'm not. So let me just. I mean, this guy is. First veterans, yeah. man, Montana, uh, they gave away everybody there. It looks like his reputation is really poor. But it looks like I could hire him pretty, pretty easily. What about this guy? His integrity is very low, though. <laughs> oh my gosh, that's uh, assistant coach at Harvard. How about this head coach at? Oh, um, he prefers a deep bitch, very slow pace, usually crash, tenacious. And what are his ratings? Let me see. Josh Bolton. He fits middle of the road in recruiting, good scouting. Oh, that's the one I've offered. Hmm. I can't. I don't think I can finish yet. Right. Let me see what it, what this tells me. No, I cannot tell if he's going to take it. Um, how about this guy? Heavily favors veterans. I don't want that. I can't believe this guy's out looking for a job after the year that he had. Um, I mean, this guy's got a terrible reputation. There's recruiting, and I mean, he's about equal on, on everything. Let me let me just throw it out there to see if I give him. First assistant, a salary of 
42. for two years. And let me see what that does. Yeah. So I was able to get him, but I, I don't know why the other guy would not... Um, Not sure why the other guy would not. Respond to my. Uh, to my. Uh, sorry, I'm just I'm, I'm thinking ahead here. Why he wouldn't respond to my offers or why I didn't get any input on that. So that's kind of a little disappointing. And it looks like I don't know if you have to change his suit there I don't know how that works either this I'm using the uh, the mod for NCAA and I haven't updated that mod although there are some mods uh, out there to update update it with but yeah he is a two star. I guess that's the best I could do. I wish I knew though how you would uh, if there are any settings that would allow you to give him a suit. Eh, but anyway, let's we're gonna finish in advance. Not the greatest uh, hire there for an assistant, but. Like I say, this is probably a learning process too for me through through some of these screens. All right, so when this this will let me know today's your opportunity to petition for improvement in facilities, a larger budget, or for more time, which I don't think I'm in any danger of losing my job. Um, and then. Okay, so I really think upgrading facilities would be the best because I think that would help you with recruiting. And if I look at the school info, let me see if it gives me an idea of what our um, facilities are like. I'm really not seeing facilities listed here anywhere but I think that probably has something probably plays into the stadium capacity and um, your prestige That's just going to give me my information. So I still think that's the way to go. I think petitioning the board, it's going to be because um, I have had a little bit of money left over after going through the recruiting. So I don't think I need to increase the budget. I don't need more time because I'm in a pretty good shot spot. So let's let's see what happens here. So now, look at my inbox, and they denied the request. So they think the pro facilities are appropriate. And that's the official end of the season. So, <clears throat> so now, we're going to click to advance to go to the next year. And this may take a little while. It says, well, they process. So this should probably update everything and let me see my uh, new players, the new roster, what that's going to look like. Hopefully. <laughs> and that's going to answer one of my bigger questions that I've had are these recruits that I've picked up, 
is that rating their potential or is it their um, current uh, potential or current ratings? I think that's the biggest uh, question mark for me, the biggest if I have going into next season. Did I get the recruiting class I think I got? Or am I looking at a bunch of scrubs that, you know, are not really going to be able to start on a major, um, well, not necessarily major college team, but, you know, we're, um, we got a prestige that's a little bit above in our conference, some, some of the conferences that make the tournament. So, um, I think, I think it'd be hard to field a team where you've got a bunch of, uh, players who are maxing out at like two star potential uh, from what I'm seeing anyway uh, looking at this team and we are looking at last season we made it as far as we did with a, a gosh almost all five players in that starting lineup having a um, three or higher rating I think Anderson the center was the only one with a two and a half and he played well at times all right so now we got um now we got some things going on. Um, so we're at May 1st. This, I think this is when you start when you start a new game, as far as that goes. Uh, and so you can buy your scouting reports and do a lot of things, or you can just let the AI handle it and go right to the where you start in training, I think, and, and those other things. Uh, but I'll get to that a little bit later so I can purchase my scouting reports. A scheduling notice. And then we got the budget. Um, so we got seventy-four thousand left, and we only have two scholarships open for next year. So recruiting that might give me a little bit more time, so that I can just really work hard on a couple of uh, bigger recruits. And now, big thing: recruit class ranking. Where are we in this? Forty-seventh. Um, okay, not bad. Um, I'm I'm happy with that. Look at that. I mean, we beat out Penn State, Minnesota, Notre Dame, Maryland, uh, Belmont. We we were ten points better than Belmont. So, um, I I'm really happy with that. If that means what I think it means. So let's uh, take a look at the alerts. So we're going to report uh, buyer scouting reports. Um, but before I do that. I'm going to look at some dashboard stuff here. We haven't got to the scheduling yet either. Um, Mike Ivory, man, he is really, he's got some good potential. But let's take a look. This is what I've been wanting to see. Um, how good were those, how good were my uh, pickups? So, man, very good. Wow. Now this is so let me let me back up a little bit here. This is using my scout um, or my uh, assistant who's in charge of scouting and he's his scouting ability is not very good. But if you can you know I probably need to fire I probably need needed to fire him and hire another one. Uh, but I was hoping these guys would develop a little bit, so I guess I'm wrong on that. Um, so let's say, I wonder if it would change on the fly, but let's see if if Joe Dawson, how's he good? Recruiting, he's 27. Josh Robertson, 32, not much better. And then Andy, who I just, he's 31. So he should be recruiting and then Player development, man, not good, but uh, yeah, pretty poor. But I uh, just changing that. I wonder if that changes the way they're looked at. I can't tell. I can't see any difference there. But let's I'm gonna do that one more time. So. He's, uh, oh, I have to save changes. So let's say I use him for scouting, him for recruiting, save changes, and then go back to the roster. 
and I'm not seeing any change to it. So I'm seeing, you know, pretty much where we were. All right, so let's, I want to move that back because I think, uh, I think he should, as much as I hate it, I think he should be, this guy should be handling recruiting because he's a little bit better at it, and this guy's going to handle scouting, and I'm just going to live with that for now. Uh, I think now that I've seen how that coach, the uh, hiring process works, I'll get, I'll get a little bit better with that next year. But back at the roster, so... Speedy McMillan, freshman point guard, he was one of my uh, signings. He's got a three potential, um, good passing potential, and you know a little bit above average ball handling ability. Pretty good outside shooting right now. Uh, let's see where he's athleticism. Athleticism is high. Free throw shooting is eh, middle of the road. Um, He's decent. I mean, he might get some time. I mean, he's probably going to have to get some time on this team, but Cunningham is going to be the starter, I think, off right out of the gate. And he's a two with a potential of two and a half. So this is where this is really where it starts getting really tough. So Jensen was my big recruit, I thought. He was uh, three stars. Uh, when I recruited and signed him, now he's two with a potential four, but that's pretty good. So if he develops to that potential, man, he's going to be a good player. But look at this, McKinnis was the last guy that I signed for the most part. He's already a three and a half with a four and a half star potential. I mean, this guy looks to be my best potential player on the team. So. You look at these three uh, signings here. That's the su big surprise. So McKinnis probably going to compete for that one already. Now, with Jensen, can he play another position? Man, I, I don't know. I don't know if he could play... Um, He's got good free throw shooting and outside shooting, passing and ball handling is really rough. So I think he's going to be stuck playing that position. So Ivory is my best potential point guard. It might be a situation where, especially early on, I'm dividing time between these two, um, well, these three, to see who's going to, who's going to be the starter full-time. But now we go to small forward, Jepson, um, a returning player uh, got a lot of um, time last year. So I don't understand this ratings progression. So why wouldn't it not show his rating progression from year to year? I just don't understand some of the some of what I'm seeing with this game. Um, I would have thought that the graph would be like, okay, he was two here last year three here now so I don't know I don't know why it's doing that or are we still looking at the 20 season no nah, I mean we're 20 20 um, freshman guy for instance ratings progression he's got a 20 20 ratings progression so don't understand where that's coming from um, but he's he's a pretty strong starter right there Marshak good backup he gets some good time down the stretch last year uh power forward so greg edwards is, is probably going to get the the look there but harriman um not a good pick so he's at a half star with a three potential that would may have been a bust i think when i was recruiting him he was like a two star three almost a three star if i'm not mistaken um so that's going to be pretty iffy. Uh, we've got some other guys here. You know, I'm pretty loaded at, at power forward, and I don't know if I'm going to need all these guys. I don't think 
there's going to be another spot for him. And then at uh, defense, another big disappointment here, Mallet, who I thought was a two-star coming out of high school. He's just a half-star. Uh, was pretty poor potential, one and a half. So... I don't know what's going to happen with this team, but that's that's what I've that's what I've kind of handed myself. <laughs> so, uh, boy, this is going to be this is going to be tough. So I've got um, a good shooting guard here in, in McKinnis. Um, very surprised by that. I didn't I didn't know that that was going to happen. Small forward Richard Jepson, uh, Marshak, probably going to get some playing time depending on how Jepson looks. Power forward Edwards, two and a half. I mean, that's uh, for a senior, I would hope that I'd get better. And then point guard uh, Cunningham, Holland at the center. Mm. This is going to be tough. I'm, I'm a little speechless. I don't know what I'm going to be able to do next year with this team. But I think that's where I'm going to leave it in this episode. I'm going to, I'm going to work on um, some things offline. I'll probably go through uh, and do like the recruiting, scouting reports. Last year I, I only bought the Southeast. I'm thinking about buying a couple this year, Southeast and maybe Midwest. To kind of expand our uh, recruiting a little bit. Um, and then I think after that scheduling, I'm, I'm probably going to have to do what I did last year, which, uh, was look for a balanced non-conference schedule. I don't think we're ready with this team to take on a, um, a challenging, tough non-conference schedule out of the gate. I think that would really set us back. And then I will probably take a closer look at each of these guys, especially, you know, like McKinnis here. Where's his strengths? Um, you know, what kind of offense do I need to really be looking at here? Uh, I mean, for him right now, he's motion, triangle, some zones that he's pretty comfortable with. But um, i got to figure out what kind of offense I can uh, run this year to get the most – advantage from these guys because I'll need it with the the kind of players I'm going to have but that's the challenge and that's why that's why I'm sticking with them one more year but boy that recruiting you know if the 47 the the rating that I got and showed you in that email I'm I'm very happy with that but um either the scouting is is off which could be definitely be the case and they're better than I'm thinking or um, or they could be even worse than I'm thinking. But uh, we'll see. It's going to be a lot to work with, but I'm looking forward to it. And as always, I appreciate you guys' support. Uh, just a reminder, I'm also still doing an out-of-the-park baseball 21 playthrough on, on the Cubs. If you haven't checked that out, uh, you might want to give it a chance and, and see if you might. If you like uh, sports management games and you haven't played that game, it's definitely worth a look. I mean, there are people who would claim uh, both a lot of the players and even some of the review sites you, you might come across out there that look at sports management games. It's one of the best, if not the best, sports management game, really, that's been made for computer. And uh, I have usually have a lot of fun with it and put a lot of time into it. But if you want to check it out, give it, give it a look and see what, you, see what you think. If not, I really appreciate the support with this uh, game. I'm surprised how many people have been watching them. It's about equal uh, between this one and Out of the Park 21. But as always, uh, thanks for watching, and I will see you next episode.